Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our viewers across the world. My name is Uttaran Chaudhary, and I'm here for Go Viral to Stop the Virus. And with me is Professor Peter Bostil. So I'm honored to have Professor Peter Bostil with me. And I'll give you a quick introduction about this amazing person. Professor Peter Bostil is the head of program Fine Arts and senior lecturer of printmaking at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts, Antwerp, Belgium. For more than 25 years, he's been giving courses of relief painting, digital media, and artist book design. His field of expertise is wood engraving. I should tell you this, that for over 30 years, he's been practicing wood engraving and is considered a master engraver. He's the member of the British Wood Engraving Society. He's produced several artist books and standalone prints, which are now part of many private and public collections. He's been, uh, you know, for over 10 years, I mean, he's, he's, he has received international fame and it has, it has brought him to many countries as a guest teacher. He's been a board member of the International Printmaking Institute and the International Academic Printmaking Alliance based in Beijing, China. So, Thank you so much, uh, Professor Boss Steels, to, to, for coming here, for being our guest. And so, how are you doing today, Professor? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, a little bit tired after uh, a long day's work. Uh, we had the final day today in the Royal Academy with the entrance examinations. Right. And so, uh, now I'm all yours. <laughs> thank you so much. So, Professor, I would uh, start with our first question. Uh, you know, why wood engraving? You know, I would uh, like to know about a little bit of your life and how it has led you to where you are now, because, uh, you know, maybe, maybe how you how you were brought up and, and, you, and your family and uh, where you were gradually led you to wood engraving and to finally being who you are. So I, I would like to know a little about that and maybe all our viewers would do as well. So please. Okay, I will try. <laughs> um... When I was a kid, I was always, I always liked to draw. Um, but my, my first uh, intention was not in, to go into art. I was just, uh, I was very much into history, into classic uh, um, European history. Mm -hmm. it, was my, it was a hobby of mine. And um, so Later on, I became much more interested in, in, in the visualization of, of, of things. And um, I come from a family of carpenters. So we, we have a, a century long um, a firm which was uh, making high quality car, um, furniture. And so um, at a certain moment, I, I decided to go to, uh, um, to the school, to, to, uh, to uh, an art school. And uh, I've, um, I came into contact with printmaking at that moment, to be honest, I was not really sure about it. I just wanted to draw and to make art. Um, right. But later on, I got much more interested into graphic arts in, in printmaking and um, especially um, in, in, in wood engraving, which okay. was at that moment already... Um, not so popular uh, with students. It was just a momentary exercise which was given, but I felt at that moment, I felt very much coming home because it was the perfect connection between the, the, the life I had led until, until when I was little, until uh, uh, by, by working in the wood and, 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 and when my family had us all these, these special kinds of woods. And, and the so, smell of wood is typically something that you would relate to, isn't it? Yes, yes. It was like you, you came home to that situation. And when I, the first time, steps into wood carving, into woodcut, and in, especially in wood engraving, where you have these fine tonalities, that made me feel like, yes, this is it. This is for me. So it was a very organical thing about even, yeah, love for the material, love for the, the wood, um, the feeling of this, this, this um, the, the nuance and, 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 and the, the, the possibilities which was in the technique that really decided me to put it on. And I already felt the moment I touched the wood that I was, 
drawn to that. Yes, it it was a the, the texture part of my body. Oh, that's so wonderful. I mean, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, the aroma, the texture, and uh, at times when you you know the different because it's it's a very physical process. You have to touch the wood, you have to engrave it, and then like there are processes where you, where you I believe you put oils on it as well, right? Yes, the, the, uh, the wood itself um, needs to be very. It needs to be very worked on. It's um, the, the the process of making blocks, um, but as well uh, the engraving part itself. It's very tactile. It is something which is um, demanding of your body. Uh, mm -hmm. So the connection with this material, like I understand right. that that for example, people who work in in sculpture. Um, who are carving in, in stone, they need that same feeling, a sort of intelligence from the body, not only from right. the mind, but from the body into a sort of natural element. Right. And that that was the feeling that I had at, at that moment. And so when I, um, I, I do remember then when I was young, I was, uh, we had a, a, quite a large uh, library of old books in my place, in my house. Uh, my father guarded all these books like from the 19th century. And a lot of these illustrations at that time was based mm -hmm. on engraving. Right. And I, rem I do remember that I was like, not like a normal kid, like going to the, the to to the to the comics or something. But I really love these these uh, these 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 special kinds of of of, of uh, illustrations, images, the special lights, which oh. is um, especially specific for wood engraving, and um, and I, I admire the way they cut and the the the, the texture. And of course, the story behind it, it was like the history of France with all the killings of all the kings, whatever. But <laughs> it must be very exciting. <laughs> well, it was like that. So and, and I really loved it. And, 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 and at the moment when I touched the wood and I started to engrave and it started to feel really good in it, um, then um, that made me remember to that part. Maybe it's part of the youth, but you won't. Well, it's something like. A nice meal that you had my, with, with your mother is making, and and right. something this connection does it make and that's, wonderful. Yeah, so, uh, you almost felt that the stories that that you read, the stories that were in your head, the the inner symbols in your heart, they were almost coming out of the wood when you when you touched it and you started carving. So it is, it must be an amazing experience. And so it brings us to uh, the second question. But the second question for me is. See, a lot of people, I believe a lot of people who are watching right now are artists and a lot of people who would watch this video later, uh, this interview later would be uh, students of printmaking. And a lot of uh, people like me uh, would be watching as well, like, you know, I'm, I'm not an artist. So I, as, as, a, as a process of education, I would want to know a little about wood engraving. How different is it is from block making or wood carving, uh, wood engraving as a process? That is uh, the first part of the question. And then I would also uh, want to know that, you know, what are your influences? Like who were your influences? You know, what were they, uh, the literature books that you just spoke about or what the other uh, wood engravers? And so, yeah, that is, that is my second question. Okay, well, <laughs> first let's go to wood engraving itself. What is yes. wood engraving? Well, in effect, a lot of people do, um, do not uh, underestimate the dif uh, do not see the difference between wood cut and wood engraving mm -hmm. um, maybe i have to make this clear um wooden wood cut is made on a plank of wood which the fibers right. are like horizontal mm -hmm. and um it's it's a very old form of printmaking it's older than wood engraving itself Okay. Um, and it's uh, like, for example, um, Lucas Kranach, um, uh, Albert Dürer, they practiced wood cuts mm -hmm. on many plants of wood. They, as well, did very fine um, um, engraving, engraving like cuts, but in fact, mm -hmm. they are cuts. It's only when Thomas Bewick in England. He's, he's the one who really started with uh, wood engraving. And the difference between wood engraving and wood cut is, like I said, wood cut is made on plank with 
um, horizontal um, fibers mm -hmm. and wood engraving is made where the fibers are like transversal. So the, 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 the tree is cut in, in, tra in, 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 in traces, how you say okay. it, uh, like parts in this way, transversal. Right. So it's, it's not like horizontal, it is, it is, you know, it's almost vertical and, and you cut it like this. Yes. Right. So the fibers right. are upwards. Yes. And right. you cut on top of this upward standing fibers. Now, okay. this gives the ability to cut in every direction without any problems. Right. When, for example, a plank is like this and you cut on, on top of it, then mm -hmm. sometimes you will chip off some of the fibers because you have right. to go through it. With wood engraving, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. The possibility of wood engraving became um, very apparent when, when Thomas Biewick was the first one who, who, who made these things. And he, um, he was able to cut very, very finely and he made a very big range of gray tones. And, oh. it, and he was able to print together with typo, uh, typo uh, lettering, right? Typographic lettering. Okay. So at that moment, uh, before that, uh, a lot of people did some books, for example, very nice books, which were made uh, for, for the good quality uh, images. Mm -hmm. Engravings were made on copper. And so they, had to, they needed two sessions of printing, one for, right. the, print, for, the, for, the, for the image and one for the mm -hmm. letter. Right. At the moment when wood engraving started, then the possibility became that they could use these those, both things together. So okay. that's one of these possibilities. Now, wood engraving later on, it was just in that period of time that books and reading and, um, and science became very popular. And a lot of people um, started to buy books and there was a lot, uh, the market right. uh, became very big. Yeah, so, printmaking revolutionized the world back then, yeah. Yes, uh, a lot of distribution of knowledge, religion, everything in the West especially, but also mm -hmm. into America, which then just started up at that moment. So yeah. it was the right time for a technique to be used in sort of functional matter. Yeah? Right. And um, from that moment on, a lot of companies started who were engraving. Okay. And um, so there were these small engraving companies like the Brothers Daziel in, 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 in England, uh, but also in America, there were quite a lot of, of, of uh, these small engraving firms mm -hmm. and they started to, 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 to make very nice engravings. First of all, facsimile, so the copying of a drawing, but later okay. on to make interpretations and to make a lot of gray tones and to make a lot of high quality images. Right. So that went on during the whole 19th century until the beginning of the 20th century. Okay. In fact, a little bit next to lithography. So lithography was in at the same time they became it became popular, but it was mm -hmm. not a very high number of editions. Wood engraving, on the other hand, was a, capable to um, capable to um, to provide you with a lot a uh, very big edition. And so that was that was a very popularity of, of wood engraving, but at the end of the the beginning of the uh, the twentieth century, um, there were other techniques who came like uh, photographic um, photo photo photographic plate techniques, All right. and um, and so in the beginning they were very bad of quality, but later on gradually they started to get high quality, and they started to replace. Wood engraving, wood okay. engraving, of course, because everything needed to be handmade, and there, of course there was already some systems of copying, but still, it was quite intense labor. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, so in let's say in the, in the years of 1910, just before the First World War, then already you you felt that everything went down, and the whole um, industry just died out. And then you would expect that the artist would take over at that moment. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that the engravers were very technically skilled people. They were not artists, 
not not at that moment right. but they were really technicians and they just made the images that somebody other mm -hmm. somebody else provided and so so they right. went to expansion they changed to other techniques and so there were only mm -hmm. very few people really engravers who became an artist so there are, okay. there are very few. the art really started mm -hmm. the art was slowly i mean to some extent feeding a little bit Yes, so you had you have some some of the the the, the artists who were um, like still having high quality of engraving, but most of them of the, the the artists didn't find their time or the patience to to go in this very fine detail. So I like the German expressionists after the war, they made a lot of engravings, but they were like more or less like woodcuts. Uh, Franz Masrel, one of the most famous ones, even Belgian Swiss uh, artist. Uh, mm -hmm. anti-war and a uh, very pacifistic uh, artist which is a very nice uh, made very nice pictures but of course you see that it's more based on on woodcut than on yes. uh, an engraving okay and so what you do is uh, you know as uh, as i see it is you to some extent go back in time and and you've you've to some extent revitalized this uh, this technique and, and you've given it a completely a new breath of life and is yeah. that so <laughs> yeah that, that's the one that's one of the things I, I wanted to achieve um, because as I told you I was really much in love with the illustrations of the 19th century and I know that in a certain period of time these illustrations were regarded as as like ancient and, and, and not very, very uh, contemporary. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were very like late romantic uh, images, which at right. a certain moment in time, and especially within the society, um, it doesn't fit. It was wrong to have these images. It was not, it, okay. it was not in, you know, it's, it was All not. Right. Out of fashion. Then. Yes, out of fashion. And so, mm -hmm. um, but I really kept on loving it, and it was for me like a very big challenge to 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 try to to get back to that because I love that and I love the engraving in this way. Mm -hmm. But for a long time, I couldn't feel the connection between contemporary images and right. uh, and the things I did. Right. So. so at a certain moment, I, I felt from okay, maybe I just have to go very low rope profile and do my stuff, and we'll see what happens. And, yeah, and, that's and then you did your magic, and you know this brings us to uh, the third question: that your uh, images, like the images that we see, they're laden with symbols. I mean, it is so modern, so contemporary, and yet you're using an art form which is uh, which is very traditional. And, uh, you know, I, I would say that every image that, that you've shared with me, I mean, the four images we'll talk about today after a while, all of them are pregnant with meaning and layers. There are different layers. And uh, it has a lot of very interesting metaphysical and philosophical questions. Like, for example, when we studied difference uh, of Derrida, uh, you know, we, 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 we studied this uh, conflict of uh, the signifier and the signified and uh, how a symbol emerged and uh, you know the concept of what came first the spoken word or the written word and and, and the dichotomy and i see uh, countless such uh, beautiful questions and uh, the battle between intellect and emotion uh, and many other questions that are laden uh, that that are deeply ingrained into uh, the wood carvings and uh, the wood engraving uh, artworks that you do and so uh, i would uh, that brings us to the question that what is art to you i mean do you think mm -hmm. that art is uh, art to you is a receptacle of symbols or is it um, you know a, a mode of education like when a viewer sees it so do you expect the viewer to to read the symbols and then you know maybe educate himself or herself or maybe uh, the, the, it is open to the viewer's interpretation. It is it is a way of life to you. So, uh, if you if you could elucidate on what art is to you and how do you define it through your work? Okay. Well, 
first, let me tell you uh, one thing that is important. Um, one of the facts that I do wood engraving is because it is not black and white, but it is gray. Right. Yes. And there is a tension between the black as an extreme and the white as an extreme and all the things be between it. So it's about tension. Tension wow. is life. Yes. Um, that these, it's always between two points and the thing in the middle, the going from one side to the other, that is what life is about. Wonderfully said. Yes, yes. yes. Well, that's, that's why I use this engraving because to my meaning, I don't feel uh, that there is only one truth. There is always this gray zone and the, the yes. nuance between these things. That's one part why I do wood engraving because it's, you cannot, sometimes when you have the, the, the woodcut, which is much more strong in image, it is, it puts black next to white and, and it, in this way gives it a force. But on the other hand, I feel sometimes that the nuance gets blown away. So there is right. only one truth in a way, or is too, too direct. Very binary, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, and these elements, and as much as I, I can, I try to, to use these nuances uh, to, 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 get, to get that different kind of feeling. So that's the first part of it. The thing is, what I want to, um, to express with my images is, first of all, I look, through, I look to the world, it filters through my mind mm -hmm. with all my background, with, with, with my, uh, hobby, uh, well, my interest in history, my, um, the, the, the things I view, uh, the society I see, it goes through me and it is my voice. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. And of course, within this voice, there is a message. Now, at a certain moment, because when you express it into an engraving or into a sentence, when it becomes out of you, it is, it, it's, it's, it gets its own life. Right. Yes? It's your child, which you have to let go a little bit. Yes. And this child does things maybe you do not want to, uh, to do. But most of the time you think, yeah, well, he's going into the right direction, you know. Let's <laughs> let him be. Yeah. yeah, let him be for a while. And that's why that's a little bit like I look at it, because of course I have a lot of intentions in my blocks. That's that's true. I really mm. when I make any design for a block, I really think about it and I try to find a lot of associations between different elements, historical facts, mythology, um, symbols. Mm -hmm. I always put them together in it, but I never take out too much, too direct, because I think right. there is no direct thing. It's always, it always has different truth. Right. So at that moment, when I engrave it, that's already a translation. And then mm -hmm. after I put it to, to, to print or I put it mm -hmm. on the internet, then of course it becomes a part of you. And the thing is that you look at, or the, the viewer looks at this uh, this image and he has to identify himself with it. So if I already tell too much of a story directly, then he cannot identify. He can only listen to my story. I understand. What I want to do is to give a sort of, I open the door, the viewer goes through it and he makes his own story. Of course. I'm a little bit manipulating this. I'm a little giving a little bit of direction. And yeah. that's what's happening. So yes, I, I like, I love to, to put a lot of things inside, which gives the viewer as well, the opportunity to take out different things and to make his own connections. Maybe it's not my connection. It doesn't matter. Right. right. As so as it is as uh, not completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and the viewer, uh, to some extent, gets into the gray zone. I mean, because between between the artist and his art, between the black and the white, the gray area, that is the area where you you know fill your own meaning in. That is that is the vacuum where you put your meaning in, and you and you interpret the art your way. So, so that's wonderfully said. And uh, which uh, brings me uh, to the next question here. 
which is see uh, professor boss steels we've uh, we've learned about uh, wooden engraving and, and and what you do and how 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 it is your childhood has led you to your passion i would want to know that you know as uh, the pandemic hit the world as the pandemic was raging through uh, belgium i was uh, I, i as an artist when you witnessed uh, the madness when you witnessed the anxiety the deaths what were you going through what did you think uh, were your responsibilities as an artist back then or uh, it is now when uh, the world is actually going through a crisis yeah well of course it's it's not finished yet huh? um yes um the thing is that uh, when we went into lockdown um at that moment um it was already clear that that there was going to be um a um well you have to know for a, a little bit about the the situation in belgium here yeah. we have quite a, an elderly public our a lot of our citi citizens uh, is not very young oh. and so we have a lot of of um, elderly homes yes all right and, so which means uh, that they're all the high risk people because uh, elderly were affected yes and so we seen in a way a, a, a big um, a big problem there and we were not prepared at that moment mm -hmm. so it became very clear that it's maybe a specific situation because i don't know in india probably a lot of young people are there but with us it's a lot of elderly people and so you we were hit fire quite hard um and you feel that there is a difference between what young people think about it and they do not worry too much mm -hmm. uh, or there is this feeling of solidarity but still you feel that there is a the situation is i think in every country a little bit different mm -hmm. we have the feeling that it hit us quite hard because we have a lot of killings we have a lot of of of, of deaths um but but still um how would we think about it because a lot of our family members are older mm -hmm. and feel very much um afraid for them right and, um so in a way it 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 went to your the way that you were thinking about your family so it brought you in a way closer Mm -hmm. for a distance because we I could not see my father I still cannot see my father at this moment right. I didn't right. see him for months already we only talked on the phone and that sort of thing mm -hmm. so it it but in a way because of this new situation um on 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 talking by internet we became closer right But now we were talking in man to man on this small screen and we mm -hmm. were talking about things that did matter so it's in a way it making a lot of distance physical distance but on the other hand it became very very close so i understand it was a very intriguing special situation now what you do as as an artist is mm -hmm. um, at the moment you know i'm i'm a teacher in the school i'm a professor in the royal academy so what we did in the in the school itself of course we went online with all the students there was no right. physical contact all the st students stayed at home and so we what we did was for 13 14 hours a day we were like on the computer teaching mm -hmm. the students uh, right. on on a chat situation so and in the meantime because i was not able to go out i certainly had even when i was a lot more on the on the computer i had time to work on my engravings so for a long time i was not able to work on the engravings because i had to be in school and i had to be there and there and there was a lot of things happening and and exhibitions and that sort of thing now i was at home and i could make engravings right and as well for um what happened as well was that for the first time in my life here at this moment i was i said okay let's put these things on the internet mm -hmm. so because i was not intending i didn't use facebook that much i just looked at people whatever or we made contact but now i put my work on the on the internet and suddenly 
I got attention from people from all over the world, which was right. quite surprising for me because I really was thinking, well, it's so it's such a niche, it's such a small part of in 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 in, in the in the world of art, wood engraving. Nobody knows it anymore. But suddenly, I got quite a lot of attention, and yes. uh, and so. And, and I but thank God you did, and thank God you got on Facebook at this point of time. So, so <laughs> yes, well, that's, that's one of the things. Now, what's what's happening here now between us two and between the world mm -hmm. probably is that we're now talking, which probably wouldn't that have have happened when when we were uh, like just in the normal situation. Right, right, I understand. and that is one of these big advantages that now uh, I've have seen a lot of people, and now. Everywhere are appearing people who are doing the same thing, and I was like really surprised because I, to to be honest, um, I did an exhibition in Beijing which I invited a lot of engravers. Mm -hmm. and I I had this list of people and I never knew that there were always and somewhere in the corner in, in in the world there were people doing that as well, but also very quietly making their art on their own mm -hmm. and that's it. Right. And suddenly they come up all, and so we became sort of network a connection, which is, and as 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 you do as well, because you're now connecting all these people. Um, that's that became the big thing, I think, in this pandemic crisis. Pandemic. Right. But instead of of feeling alone and and and, and encapsulated, it you suddenly off. started connecting. Yes, yeah. that is that is uh, you know it is uh, it's very strange that uh, that a virus which which has actually uh, been uh, at at certain times becomes a boom and uh, maybe it is the power of our minds we we change the way we perceive it and we use it to our advantage. All right. In this note, uh, uh, we what we'll do now is we'll, we'll move to four of your artworks and we'll take them one by one and uh, you know I'll talk about how I feel about them and I would uh, you know request. Professor Bostils to uh, you know share his views because all of them have a very interesting symbolism uh, engraved uh, in different layers and uh, so I'll I'll try sharing the screen and we go to the first one yeah this one uh, it is called uh, you know we we are calling it make wisdom go viral and uh, the title of this one is the fall of the, the Icarus, and this deals with the myth mythology of Icarus and uh, the man who who uh, flew too close to the sun and his wings melted. And uh, this uh, mythology has a million different interpretations and allusions, which poets have used, which uh, a lot of people have uh, uh, liter people in literature have used. And uh, you know, it is it is also something that you know people uh, look at as uh, an ambition as, as, a, as a symbol of ambition as a symbol of uh, you know extreme wisdom that like when you when you fly and you fly too close to the sun and then you uh, you know then maybe your wings melt and then you then you fall down to the sea to me this image when i see this image i i the first thing that hits me is this sense of intrigue i i see this man with uh, wings on where his head is supposed to be, and uh, he's holding a, a book. And I, I feel that at this point of time, I, I see the translation of, of the fear of the virus into the concept of wisdom. I see this is, uh, as I've discussed with Professor Bostils before, I know that this is Dedalus, the father of Icarus. He, and, uh, and the fact that there's a battle between wisdom and, uh, I mean, the heart and, and, and the head, the logic and intellect that is that is happening. And to me, it, I, I feel that right now, this is exactly what is going on in the world at this point of time. Uh, I see an interpretation, a translation of the shape of the virus into a very present dichotomy. Like right now, at, in various different countries in the world where the lockdown is going on, people don't know whether they are supposed to sit back at home or whether they're supposed to move out because you know a lot of people think if they sit back at home and 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 they make the lockdown successful then you know uh, they they would not get paid they would not get any salary and uh, and and their families would starve and they would want to go out the problem is if they go out then uh, the lockdown won't be successful and the and the threat 
would multiply. And so this, you know, it is necessary to have uh, a sense of wisdom at this point of time, a wisdom which is, which, which is very, which is, I, I would say, a, you know, a very difficult term at this point of time. It is people are torn between, you know, the emotion and, and, and logic. And I believe uh, this image represents that. And I would request Professor Bostils to speak about this a little bit. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, in effect, it is. Um, it's a very. It's a very good interpretation. I really love the way that you're um, um, connecting this. Uh, this. Uh, this story to it. Um, for me, um, when I originally thought about the, the concept, was. Um, I was already thinking quite a lot about making an, an image about Icarus. Mm -hmm. But for me, Icarus is uh, only part of the story. And um, as well, when I came to part of my life, uh, I have several children, uh, all of the age, uh, like three young sons. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, I felt a little bit in the same situation um, as, as, as the mythology um, um, uh, puts in. It um, the story is not what the image, in effect, which I illustrate here is not Icarus, but the father Daedalus. Right. It's an older mythical story uh, of of the Greek mythology, um, and Daedalus was considered like a very um, intellectual person. He was one of the most intellectual persons at that moment. He was the one who um, constructed, for example, the labyrinth in in in, in which in in Crete. Um, to uh, to hold the minotaur. minotaur, yes. Right. So um, and he was ca held captive, and then later on he um, escaped, and it was his idea to make the wings for him and his son to fly mm -hmm. away from the island. Now, it is a little bit again um, on this on this structure that I'm I'm talking about the um, the relation between father and son. Mm -hmm. The father is quite intellectual and he takes his, his son along and he knows that it's a young guy who's like adventurous and he wants to uh, and go away. yes and, and to express and he's very emotional and the mm -hmm. man is very thoughtful and cerebral and he uh, is thinking about it very much and he said okay let's get out of this island and uh, I, will, I will make me wings and we fly away so um, of course, it goes all goes wrong, and um, I was thinking about this fact that Daedalus, as a father, was in a way not and as an intellectual, was not calculating very much how his son would react in this situation. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, this is a little bit about the um, the lockdown and the situation that is is here. Because now we have these exit strategies, and you right. see that in a way we're now trying to control our young people to go out and and yes and get into trouble again and, and get us into a second wave maybe. So right. it is very much connected to its thing. So the, the wings uh, on on the head, the the um, it's of course it's about the freedom of the mind and the way that you're thinking out of a box and. Mm. and who would think about leaving an island uh, when at that at a moment when there was no planes and there was no flight? Who could fly? Right. The book itself, of course, is is a book of wisdom. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, knowledge and 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 then um, you had you have these holes inside of the things, which is is, is quite important, not only for aesthetical reasons because um, the the thing is that um, when I made the corpse. I, I was already thinking about the background, but not in a way that I would I would leave out these big holes. Mm -hmm. And these holes stand a little bit for the virus. Yes, it's a uh, right. the, the the many the many parts, and as of of course the holes in the body as well as the infection of of, mm -hmm. of or damaging of a body. Right now, it all connects. It connects to to a series of images where which which you will see later but is all mm -hmm. connected to um to damaging the block and the, to damaging the image which i will explain a little bit later on in in, in our explication 
but I thought it to be a very good connection between these things, uh, b between the the damaging of the body, the um, the, the physical and cerebral elements together yes. into 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 this, this tension again. So wonderful. Yeah. So so this this makes this image. I, I mean, I I would say this makes it very heavy. It makes it heavy with uh, you know very personal interpretations and uh, you know symbols from Greek mythology and of course uh, you know elements of the present day crisis. So so together, I, I would say it's striking and it and it serves its purpose. It makes us aware. I want to make <laughs> one thing here that I don't want to be uh, a sort of making depressing images. Maybe sometimes it it's it's disturbing and it it, it I think that. I like to to um, to put a question to the viewer. Right, absolutely. It, for me, it is not uh, an image which is um, is a sort of yeah dark image. It is for mm -hmm. me sort of observation, and right. um, and I don't want it to be. Maybe it's it's for it can be that for a viewer it it looks to be very dark. But for me, it is not like this. It's uh, it's it's more of an observation. I like to um, to accept things. Mm -hmm. and this is a sort of situation in which I say, okay, this is it, and now yeah, now it comes. See why these things are happening. That's yeah, it, and, and a better understanding. And in it's a like way. So that's it, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> all right. And um, uh, so, with your permission, we'll move to the next image. Very well, uh, Professor Boston. Yeah, okay. So this one, it says, <clears throat> "Make identities go viral." This is also very haunting. When I look at this image, I see the shape of the virus being <clears throat> translated into a story, where we see, you know, a person standing in front of a mirror and we see the spikes coming out the hands coming out of the mirror to me that is to some extent the reflection of the pandemic and and the flood the flood waters that that's coming in that's inside the room it almost reflects the fear and uh, the fact that it, it's breathing on our shoulders and at this point of time i feel that it is very important to introspect look within ourselves and to look in the mirror and to actually look at who we are and to and to and to feel our own pulse and understand who we actually are deep within and so uh, you know you know our religion our fundamental rights our love for our loved ones or our instincts all these very fundamental things which make our identity are actually you know taken one by one very tangibly and looked at i mean at this point of time because we're always home because we're always looking at ourselves and that i believe gives us strength and courage that makes us makes uh under our makes us understand ourselves better and i have a feeling that through this image this image also acts as a mirror and when i look at it i see very interesting details which i don't usually see and i see details about myself here and so this is my interpretation and professor boss steals i would request you to talk about this a little bit Okay. Well, in fact, you're right in this, this the flooding of the room, um, the, the water is, of course, a threatening feeling of, of this infection which coming on and, and, and threatens our home. In fact, it's a view of an interior within mm -hmm. a lockdown. That's quite obvious that uh, uh, so you're inside trying to keep the, 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 the danger out, but it's still coming in. So mm -hmm. that's one part of the element, uh, which, of course, you have uh, totally right. There are some obvious elements inside. Um, for example, the arms of the person are black and look to gloves, right. and, and the and the um, the veil on top of the of the of the person could like um, connect to 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 masks and to protection. Right. So this is is a situation there. Now um, on, on on part of the mirror. Um, of course, I was. I was. Um, um, you see the black, the black uh, lines and and mm -hmm. a little bit like hands. Now, right. in this way, I reflect a little bit towards um, the Egyptian symbols of the sun, 
which okay. is atom and um, the rock. yes and at a certain moment in the history of egypt there were these hands were like stretching out to people um like protecting them for a way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in a way this uh, this this image is a little bit about when you feel in danger or you feel in, in, in worry, then sometimes you go to a sort of, um, uh, you, you, you go to religion to, to ask for help, yes, and to ask for belief. So for me, that image is not like the, um, a dangerous part. It's not the virus itself. The virus is like on the floor, but right. the, the, the 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 mirror and, and the arms are more like yes the the um the religion or and in fact this this round um the round frame which is mm -hmm. as a mirror is in fact as well in the west um we had this these um, frames let's say in the in the in the early years uh, of the of of the of the last century and mm -hmm. this in it, this frame was a, a, um, an embossed frame where okay. you had a cross hanging in, and it was like a sort of icon. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, in a way, I reflect to this. Um, so, it's a it's a, it's a complex situation, a multiplex situation, in which way um, I'd say, yeah, you can you can look at it in this way, but as well in the other way. So right. it's a yeah. view in, a, in a way uh, you will make a, a, the interpretation as it is a source of danger and, and it reflects to the virus. On the other hand, I think more of it as a part of the religion and the symbols and, you know. And, and so almost yeah. like a refuge that people would go and get, and get their respite from there. Yes. Right. And in a good and in a bad way. There is always doubt between these things. And what is religion does? Sometimes it does very good, and sometimes it keeps faith and, and right. people strong. On the other hand, sometimes in the West, we have seen that there are a lot of wrong things were done because of religion. Mm -hmm. And as well, there you have this this mixed feeling bet between it and the tension. Right, the gray area. Yes. Yes. And I would like to show our viewers the details of this. I mean, if you if I actually zoom in, get people who are, who are looking at this, see the lines, see the details in this, see the grains here and see, I mean, this is what he's talking about between the blacks and, and, and the whites, see the gray zones. And so, I mean, this is how detailed Professor Bostil's works are. Every one of them, if you, if you look deep inside there, they're, they're they're tremendously detailed and they're extremely exquisite. And uh, on this note, uh, Professor Bostils, I would like to draw your attention to the mirror here. And I would like to talk about another painting, you know, another Fle Flemish painter, Jean Van Eyck and his mirror, because uh, once you men mentioned that uh, this mirror here uh, was also, you know, you were also alluring to Jean Van Eyck's mirror, right? Yes. Yes. So let me go to Van Eyck's uh, painting. This one is called The Arnold in His Wedding. I mean, uh, uh, Professor Bostils, I would like to say this is one of my favorites. I've been enthralled with this painting all my life. This is, uh, you know, because first of all, I need to say that uh, I'm not, uh, as a Flemish painter during the Northern Renaissance, uh, you know, with the, with the coming of oil paints, Van Eyck, uh, found this tremendous perfection. I mean, he found detail. He, he found uh, attention to detail, which very few artists found back then. And it is extremely exquisite. I mean, if you see in a lot of his paintings, I mean, there's a, a pair of eyeglasses kept on a Bible and you could see the diffraction of the, of, of, of the letters. I mean, he, he went into that kind of detailing where he went uh, to, to the letters through the eyeglasses and, and he deflected them and he maintained uh, truth and he and he ensured that it is and he's, he's true to his craft. And in this painting here, we see the newly married couple. Uh, this is the man and, and the woman and, and they have a dog and they have, uh, uh, you know, the shoes here. And, uh, you know, it, look at the drapery, which is exquisite. 
you know, uh, there's light coming in through this window and there's a chandelier on top and the bed. And the most interesting part, uh, our viewers, is the mirror, the mirror right here. I mean, if I go closer to the mirror, I mean, I would go to an enhanced image, which is this. So you would see that in the mirror, see the amount of detailing done. I mean, there are images, uh, re the religious images of nativity and uh, the birth of Christ to, to his crucifixion here. And there's also in the mirror reflections, reflections of the, of the bride, reflection mm -hmm. of the groom, reflection of the window, the chandelier, the bed. See if we come back, you know, if you, if you see this and you see this, you would know that there's a complete reflection. And Professor Bostil said the most fascinating thing that I find about this image is if you look closer, there's, you know, there are two men standing at the door, one wearing a blue dress and one wearing the red dress. The man who's wearing the blue dress is considered uh, Jean Van Eyck himself, who's, who's, who's painting this. So it is the reflection of the painter, which is also there in, in his art. And uh, the strangest part is the man in, or the woman in the red dress. The, behind them all. And to me, you know, when I interpret this image, I interpret it as the person who's looking at it. It is the viewer. It's the viewer who's standing behind the artist and, and he's looking at it. It's me, it's you, it's us. And so uh, Van Eyck back then, uh, you know, he went into, he was so true to his craft that he went to, you know, uh, this detail and, and, and he literally, uh, you know, took his painting to a level of poetry where the viewer could see his own or her own self uh, in his piece of art. Just, and I, and I would like to say that uh, I feel the same about your art because when I look at your art and I, and I, and I see myself mirrored in it, and that is why I thought uh, I would bring this up and I would share this with you. Thank you, that is very nice of you that's, uh... <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not on the level of Jan van Eyck. Uh, I am. The, I'm sorry. I, I even um, I, that that's a statement I want to make as well is um, I do not consider myself as an artist. Um, that may be a little bit of a surprise, but um, I think it's not mine to say if I'm an artist. It is the viewer to say if right. I'm, an artist. and it goes for every work that I make. It's not. Uh, I don't feel that I have the, um, um, how you say, the the thing that to, to say that I'm an artist, that's, that's a little bit over the top. I think that um, the message has to come through and there the man who views it, he can appreciate it. And then he can say after a time or whatever, he said, okay, this man can be an artist, but I will never say that for myself. Yeah, but I'm a viewer of your art, and let me say that your art is amazing. And trust me, you know I've, I've been I've been floored, I've been thrilled, and I've been amazed at your art. And I feel you're, you know, one of the best artists I've come across. And so this is from my heart. Okay, <laughs> thank right. you very much of you. That's very kind. <laughs> so in this note, we'll move to the next image with your permission, very Professor Boss. Yes. All right. So in this one, it is uh, titled Martyr Five. And uh, to me, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, I, I've called it make questions go viral because for me, I, I felt that this, this shows us the condition of, uh, of our inner selves and our outer selves. Uh, you know, the, the shape of the virus has been translated into the inner flagellation. I mean, deep inside, we are all flagellated, we are all warded and, and our wounds show, you know, we've lost people, we've lost our loved ones, we've lost, uh, thousands of people in a city, a thousand, millions of people in a country, and we're like, uh, you know, worried and, and and literally worried sick. And these worries, they, they, they show on our skin, they show on our, on our faces, on the wrinkles that form. And I also feel that these, uh, these worries or these thoughts are scars that, that also can strengthen us. I mean, like battle wounds that uh, a soldier would display with bravery and they would say that this is this has made me who I am. This has made me stronger. I have a feeling that these uh, this flagellation, the marks of flagellation on the back of a martyr makes a martyr a martyr. So it makes us stronger, gives us courage, and of course, uh, helps us to, to move on and, and, and face the problem and take it by its horns. 
and this is this is what I think, and I also know that this is uh, this image comes from a very deep uh, realization inside you when you when you felt the conflict between uh, skill and craft and avant-garde art. So I would uh, request you to talk a little about that, please. Okay. Well, um, a lot of my works, um, the, the the martyrs, is a series of works, and this is number five of it. And so I've I've worked around um, this feeling of um, of making a statement. Uh, a martyr, and for me as well, is making a statement. He's offering himself to to get a message through. Yes, mm -hmm. that is yes. Uh, um, that's one of the big things. Now, um, when I was making these works, um, I was really trying to um, to get that special feeling of this nineteenth-century engraving, the special light, which only becomes when you have a, a lot of fine lines next to each other, and it becomes a sort of gray, which you cannot make with another technique. It's, this is very specific, specific for wood engraving, and um, and so I was working towards um, the feeling of the energy that you have to put in a work into a work to make it, and then yeah. at the same time I would damage the block. I would right. do something, and in the first the first four engravings, I really or uh, damaged the block itself. Uh, mm -hmm. After the engraving, then when the engraving was finished, I went over it with sort of very rough engraving, and then I, I, I broke up the block. Or in the print, I would slam a nail into it, and to uh -huh. damage and to molest it. And with this one, um, at a certain moment, because you know when I'm engraving and make this is interpretive eng engraving, so it's the design is there in a very rough drawing. And then I'm start engraving, and then I make up the story when I engrave. So it is not finished before the engraving stops. For example, the lines which are at the back and which now are looked upon as as sort of um, wounds, mm -hmm. they were not intentionally there at the beginning. So I wow. made some drawings and I put these lines there just to make the drawing. And then later on, when I was engraving, at a certain moment, I stopped and I saw the effect of this. And I said, right. okay, but this is interesting. And so, and, and the, the story so gradually became alive when I was working on this. When it was finished, the fly was not there. So, uh -huh. because the fly is a second block, it's it's a small engraving which I printed on top of the, of the, of the, of the because at the moment that I was, finished all the, the engraving and I thought, okay, now I need to destroy the block because that was the intention to it. And I, I wanted to cut, cut like white lines on top of it to, to, to destroy it. And I was not able to. It's always okay. very difficult to destroy the block. Right. I couldn't do it because at that moment, um, when I looked at the image, it was already quite strong and there was this feeling of, of loneliness a little bit inside. And I felt, for me, it was one of, the, well, my favorite blocks at this moment. Mm -hmm. So I was really like, how? I couldn't get it into my heart to destroy it. So uh, the only thing I could do was, uh, well, just put that thing on top of it. So, and right. I put the, the fly, which was not intended to be on that block, but it was like for another project. And I suddenly, it was, standing next to me when I was engraving this one because I didn't put it away. Mm -hmm. And at a certain moment, I, I looked at it and I said, okay, maybe that's that's the thing that needs to be done. And that's yeah. that, uh, by coincidence, uh, this was there. And I put it on top of it. And then this connection between this association between the fly, like putting, it's a large fly on top of this, this it's very strange. It's almost feeding on, on the wounds. Yes. And so it became sort of dialogue between those two prints, which in effect were not intended in the beginning. Right. It's like two two strangers meeting and then, and then falling in love and then you know starting yeah. a family. Yes. 
Well, yes, that's uh-huh. a, a brave delegate. Yes, <laughs> but that's that's the fact. So, in a way, um, the the story um, behind it became much more complex by making yeah. it. So, during the process of making it, it became like this. Uh, okay. For example, you will see that as well. The the the, the bottom part is made of. Um, you have the the, the black, yeah, the trousers. But also mm-hmm. well, there are these small lines which are on the side and 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 make a sort of divergence. It's it's a little bit clear that that it's it's um, yeah. So these lines, and yeah. so it was a, an effect that I wanted to to keep like this because I think this is one of the most important things in printmaking. We are you have um, print uh, print techniques which are constructive like etchings or like like a drawing you start from a white page and you draw black lines so you create elements within woodcut and within wood engraving it goes vo- vice versa because you start from a black thing and you take out it's like cutting away out of a stone and to make image by destroying things so it's a destructive creativity in contrast of the constructive creativity, which is the other parts. Yeah, and it's I like how a star is born. A star is born out of destruction. Like, yeah. you know, a very yes. good friend of ours, a brother, uh, Eugene Skeef, uh, wrote this very interesting poetry saying that there's violence at the birth of a star. That, that's his line. And so, you know, I, I see such you know, interesting poetry, even in the way you create uh, wood engraving. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, well, that's. I think it's it's something that that every printmaker has to decide for himself. Where do you feel the best in? Of course, there will be mixed uh, systems, but when that's that's one of the parts where in the beginning I was talking to you when I went into this engraving and it was like cutting away things and and keeping and 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 knowing when to stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, on that part was for me a very uh, nice feeling. And when I look back at my lithographs and my etchings as well, then where is mezzotint um, um, or, or, or the, the scraping technique in lithography? That was one of my favorite techniques as well, by taking away things uh, more than adding. Right. So that's my way of doing things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. So in this note, uh, Professor Bastille, we'll move to the next image with your permission, the last one. Of course. Yes. All right. So this one is uh, extremely interesting because uh, this is very Kafkaesque to me when I see, uh, you know, because uh, as, I, as I would want to think that today, I believe, is the birthday of Franz Kafka. And uh, when I look at uh, this image, we see a man uh, wearing a helmet, which is very steampunk, which is extremely uh, retro. And then he has this insect in his hand. It's very existential. I mean, as I say, it, it feels like it's a book out of a Kafka novel. And, uh, you know, to, to me, uh, you've uh, named it The Visitor. I mean, I feel, uh, you know, I, I'm calling it make interpretations go viral because I feel that this image is open to so many interpretations. I mean, what is, I mean, you've uh, translated, I feel that the virus, of, virus has been translated into, uh, rather than, into that insect, but I feel the virus has been translated into a question that, you know, it is, it's almost scientific the way this man is looking at uh, that insect. What is it? Uh, how is it, what, it, what is it made of? Uh, how does it fly? Does it crawl? Does it, does it, does it have a voice or, or uh, you know, what is inside it? And so uh, at this point of time, I feel it is sometimes how, you know, I, a critic or even a viewer looks at a form of art. I mean, he's enthralled, he looks at it, he looks at it from the side. Uh, see, if, if we, in fact, uh, walk into the Uffizi and if we see um, Michelangelo's David, I mean, we, we, tend to, we tend to move around and we tend to look at it from different directions. We tend to feel the tension in the, 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 the muscles of the feet. You know, we see the vein in, in the arm and, and, and then we try to feel that, okay, what is this man thinking? What was going on? Was, is it looking at Goliath? Is it after Goliath is dead or is it, what is going on? And so uh, it is, it's almost like you look at a piece of poetry or art. It is, you want to interpret it. You want to question it. And unless you ask those questions, the meaning of life remains incomplete. Well, that is uh, my interpretation of uh, 
uh, for this wonderful work of art, Professor Bostils. Uh, would you please, uh, if I, I would request you to say a few words about this. Okay, yeah. well, you're absolutely right. It um, um, This image was intended to, to put up questions. Um, Thank you. Um, in, a, in a way, um, as I look at um, the, the situation now, and you see this uh, this person as a, as a diver, in a way, you the, one of the stories, one of the readings that you can can see in here is, of course, when you take the old pictures from uh, divers on diving sites, and you have this 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 uh, people standing around a helmet diver. A helm diver, diver, and 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 they're like waiting, or they he's coming out of the water or going into the water, and then you have these pictures, like black and white, uh, like um, late nineteenth um, century pictures, and um, so I was referring in a way to this uh, part because it's it's one of these big things that I was really loving uh, when I was in um, when I was younger, uh, these adventurous things. Um, and maybe you don't know it, but, but I've been for 20 years, I've been uh, a diver as well, a oh. diving instructor. So I was oh, wonderful. diving. I did not know. <laughs> well, so um, I've been diving for, for, for a long time. And so, um, uh, but not with a helmet, just like a scuba diver. So, um, so that was one of my, in my mental library, that's one part which is always there. So it's it's images which are like stacked in there. And, wow. and so, but the thing is that I want to represent here, the question is um, where, what is, what is this, uh, this, this visitor? Who is the visitor? Is it right. the, the thing that he, that this, uh, this, this like a little bit undefined creature that he takes out or is the person there the visitor, this right. new alien, and the people standing around there, like like in white lap coats, mm -hmm. are they? Who are they looking at? Are they looking at the person or this alien, or is this alien the leader of the gang of of uh, um, scientists who are looking to at this at this uh, this creature? What right. is the creature? Is it a creature which? Is is there a question of good or bad? That's something that I think is is a very interesting way to 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 think about it, because um, you know we like to think uh, things that harm us are bad. Right. This creature itself thinks that he's uh, really having a good time. You know, <laughs> so for him this is not a bad situation. You know, right. and so. All these different kinds of view, I think that is one I wanted to put in here. So what is this and what is the situation? And as you say, there are many interpretations of this, of this part. So, but again, in all the images that I, I wanted, so in a way I want to explain it like in a way, but on the other hand, I as well want to the, the public to, 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 to find his own story and interpretation inside. That's very important for me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that is that is wonderful. With with this, we'll stop our screen share. We'll move out of the images, and we'll uh, come back to the way we were. And uh, well, this is this has been such an enlightening journey for me. I mean, I've I've it's almost like I've sat through uh, one of your classes, and I've been educated, and I, and I feel wonderful to know about the details of wood carving, and. Uh, the, the various poetic ways, uh, so extremely poetic ways of looking at, uh, you know, carving away and, 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 and literally engraving out meaning. And so this is, uh, for, for me, this is fascinating. And, uh, and lastly, I would uh, like, you to, like to ask you uh, a question, uh, which is, uh, say, what is your message to the artists who are watching, artists around the world who are watching? Well, um, I think um, one thing I was already um, um, thinking about for a long time. Um, I think we need to unite. We need to 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 see um, who who is in, in all the world. 
um, who is um, who is working with these things. I think that the creativity um, which is displayed now in these moments of 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 of, of dire dire and need, I think this is a, um, a way out. Um, not only for the artists themselves, but as well of the people who are looking. And I think, um, uh, Uteram, that you're you're doing this this exact thing. So I really um, want to thank you at the bottom of, of my heart because you're giving this opportunity. Um, but I think as well that the artists all over the world needs to uh, to to do this and um, um, and to to get to know their their art. And to to join up and to um, and to enlighten the and to infect the other people as right. well. Um, so maybe that's the biggest viral infection that you <laughs> that we need now. Yes, yes. and uh, you know what is fascinating is as we were talking because we are talking from a different platform and then broadcasting this live on Facebook. There are a lot of people who have been asking and, and questions and I've been talking about a couple of things like Borshana Chaudhary here said that uh, she likes to imagine the alien being the leader in, in the visitor. Yeah, I mean, she likes to think that, uh, you know, that the alien is the leader and uh, and before this, I mean, it is her interpretation before this, uh, Swati Biswas uh, said that, uh, you know, if we could say, say a couple of words about the wood engraving in India, in Mysore. Well, in the southern part of India, in Mysore, uh, there are exquisite, uh, you know, I mean, wood engraving is found, uh, say, a completely, uh, I, I would say it's been there since the ancient times, and, and there have been extremely uh, interesting examples of wood engraving, and it, it, is, a, it is a very uh, rampant art form. People, people do this even, even today, and they, they engrave the sandalwood at times and, and which also offers this very fascinating aroma along with uh, the texture and uh, so so <laughs> she wanted you to know this and so uh, you know that's and very I, nice. and told you and, that's something uh, to miss. Uh, and last uh, when when you're when you're printing you 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 smell the 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 ink and that sort of thing but the sandal boot of course that would do the trick very well it would be a perfect combination i think it's, uh, I need to, to, that's something that, um, of course, that is very important as well now, is um, we in the West here have always regarded our art or the, the things that we do as important, you know, uh, but we had a lack of interest in a way of, um, of art from other mother countries we only looked upon it as a sort of yeah it's ethno ethnic or whatever but that's not the case there are things that are much better there than here and so um yes and i think we're starting to get to know that and we still and, and because of this situation i think that i I've already now in this last month i've uh, been in contact with a lot of people from latin america uh -huh. And there as well, you have a very passionate um, image building, which right. is um, so interesting. And of course, we know some of them, but now you, you feel much more um, very nuanced and very other styles. And as well there, and, and as well in, in, in within this last month, I've seen so much of images from, from India and from people who are doing their woodcut and, and, and especially as well in, in your uh, videos from, I don't know, I cannot remember the name of the, of the person there, but he made marvelous woodcuts and, and very interesting work. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure that at this moment, all these things are happening. So. Right. Wow. And so lastly, uh, I've taken a lot of your time, but I'll, well, I want to conclude with the last question which is say in hashtag go viral stop to stop the virus uh, what we're doing is we are it's an initiative where we bring artists musicians sculptors poets uh, homemakers children men women together and they, and we encourage them to translate the shape of the virus into different art forms into beautiful poetry art sculptures and, and photographs and so uh, in this way we believe that if we, if we can do this, I mean, these beautiful art forms slowly, you know, I mean, slowly uh, the art forms, they gain abstraction. 
And so what started with the shape of the virus slowly turns and changes and it becomes a poem about a child's smile. It becomes a beautiful, uh, you know, say improvisation on the Raga Bhage Street. It becomes, uh, say, you know, a completely different story in a uh, say in, in wood engraving. And so slowly uh, the concept of fear of the virus disintegrates and it becomes you know, uh, almost a mode of uh, creative excellence, a mode of creative expression. And so, uh, because uh, you, you know, we've invited you to be a collaborator and, and you've collaborated with us and you're one of us now, and I would uh, request you to say your views about this initiative and if you have any message for us. Well, <laughs> I must admit I was um, first a little bit and strange because of it, uh, because the question. But but then again, um, when talking to you, and and to see what what you meant with it, and 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 I was really like, uh, um, yeah, baffled a little bit because of the situation and, and, and because of the possibilities. And I think you you've done a marvelous job until now. And um, I'm really I'm looking at the, at the, at the videos. I'm looking at the works, and. Um, and I think you've made a marvelous opportunity um, to change that sort of view of fear and, and, and anxiety and the dark feeling that you have with this into something creative. I think that is as well a natural thing that you try to fight away. So it's, 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 it's the natural thing, but to organize it and to to be a sort of, of of pioneer in that sort of thing i think it's 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 completely up to in in, in your hands now and, and it's really in, enjoyable to see that it works and that it uh, becomes uh, something like very big like this so, okay, so um, much. And i would also like to thank the, you know more than 2500 people from over 45 countries in the world have uh, you know collaborated with us and and every day a new uh, artists from different parts of the world are coming and musicians are sending in their entries and so and they're their collaborative music and so uh, it is it is a beautiful thing that uh, you know this collaboration is happening and all these people are coming together and so so it is and, and thank you so much for being a part of that <laughs> thank you thank you it's, it's, it's an honor to have you with us today and so this today we'll end our conversation and Thank you, viewers, for being with us. Thank you for, for, for your comments and, and likes. And, uh, you know, please be in tune because, uh, you know, we'll do this more often. And thank you, Professor Bostils. Thank you for being with us. And uh, we, we, we wish you all the best and we wish you all the light in the universe. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah,